Hi everyone, I am Akash and I am back with another video. So friends, I hope that you are liking this polyfill series in which I am sharing the polyfill questions from basic to advanced that were asked to me during the front-end interview rounds. I keep sharing these front-end interview experiences with you all. So do watch this video till the end and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And guys, if you do not know what polyfill is, then let me tell you that polyfill is simply a fallback for those all those methods and all those functionalities that are not supported by some of the browsers in javascript so let's begin the video so the first polyfill that we're going to discuss today will be filter how filter method actually works let's have a look at this sample array it is simple one two three four five inside our array and let's write the filter method first so it is going to take a callback now now what filter actually does is it will run this callback on each of these element and it will only return those particular elements that will be satisfying your particular condition so let's suppose i want to i want to filter out all those elements that are greater than 2 so what i will be doing is i will simply add this condition over here that fetch me all those elements which are greater than 2 now let's have a look at this console So as we can see over here, what array we have got is 3, 4, 5 because these are greater than 2. Cool. Now let's suppose the interviewer asks you that you have to write the polyfill for this particular filter. So what we are going to do is, let's have a name for our filter as my filter and friends to make it accessible by all the instances of the array, what we are going to do is we have to simply call it on the array constructor and how we are going to attach it to the these array instances all the to, i hope you have heard about prototypal inheritance so we have this prototype property that is available on all these array constructors objects in javascript with the help of which we can simply attach this particular function to all other array instances cool now all we have to do is we need to add this function over here Cool. Now what is going to happen is let's first write how we are going to call it. So what we need to do is simply change the name with our custom function my filter and this will be the callback. Now this function will have access to this callback over here. Now friends what we need to do is now we need to run now we need to write simply write our logic inside this function. So first we need to have the access to this array. So how we are going to have the access in, to this array is using the this. Let me console it for you. And as you can see, we are getting the array. Okay, so actually we have been using it two times. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, five. We have got this one, two, three, four, five, which means that we can access the array inside this function using this okay this particular array now what we need to do we simply need to run a loop a for loop tool we are simply going to run a for loop let's replace this array with this because this is our array now and now what we have to do is and friends as you all know that this particular filter will be returning another array modified array so let's take another modified array which basically we are taking this response array that is going to keep the result now all we need to do is simply write your logic if and inside this if we are going to call our callback method and this callback method is going to take this basically elements all the elements so what we have what i told you is what filters does filter does is it simply runs all this callback basically this callback method on all these elements so that what we are doing over here we are simply we are simply going to pass all these elements inside this callback method and if that if that particular callback returns us true for that particular element then only we are going to push it inside our response array response dot push this at i and finally what we can do is simply return the response array back so friends let's have a look at this particular response
broke. So our quote broke. Why it broke? Because we all have a muscle memory of using I as index. So let's replace it with index. Cool. So now as we can see, we have got this filter array. You want to run some another condition. You can like have a look at like all the elements that are less than two. So it, it gave us one. Cool. So friends, this is the polyfill for filter. I hope it was it is clear to you all. Now let's try to have a look at another polyfill. And that will be let us take this array with us. So friends, another polyfill that we are going to have a look at will be reduce method. Cool. So let's simply write a simple implementation of reduce first. So array dot reduce. Cool. Now what it takes is, let me show you. So it, ta it also takes a callback function. Okay. And that callback function takes a previous value, current value, current index and array. So what you can do is, basically it will take an accumulator and it will take a current value. Cool. And let me, uh, let's write a simple implementation for it. And inside over here, it takes an initial value. Cool. Now simply return accumulator plus current value. So it is going to return us the response. Let's have a look at the response. Let's log it. So friends, the response that it gave us was is 15, like 1 plus 2, 3, 3, 3, 6, 4, 10 and 15. So this is the value initial value of the accumulator cool and what it does it it travels it simply traverses the array and it has accumulated the result one by one inside this accumulator cool and this is called the current current means initial value like when we are traversing the loop then the initial value like the current value basically like one two three four five so you can also have a look over here that says that it calls the specified call callback function for all the elements in an array and the return value of callback function is the accumulated result cool and accumulated result and it is provided as an argument in the next call of the callback function okay cool so simply that we used to do sum is equals to sum plus array at i that particular logic now let's say you are given a task to write the polyfill for this particular method so how we are going to do this let's comment it so as i told you earlier what we are going to do is we simply are going to add this property inside this prototype property so this will be a my reduce and over here it will take a function so friends don't get confused when it comes to writing a polyfill for reduce it can be a bit tricky so simply like simply remember your roots okay so what we have what we have done over here we are simply passing this callback so the first argument that it is taking is a callback so you also have to pass a callback the first argument second argument is initial value so simply provide it an initial value cool now what i have told you that this accumulator takes this initial value so have an accumulator and pass this initial value to this accumulator cool you simply need to remember the rules of that particular function so this simply takes the initial value it can also be a case in where the initial value is not present if the initial value is not present then what is assigned to accumulator is the zeroth index of the array cool so what we can do is we and I have also told you that the accumulated result is stored inside this accumulator. So we are going, simply going to have a have inside our logic is that if we have our accumulator, which means if the initial value is passed, then simply do something with the callback function, or else simply assign it. We have we have forgot one thing. We need to run a loop because we are these all are array methods and we are running we are basically traversing the array and we can access the array using this so inside this array what we are going to do is 
now this accumulator and if we have the accumulator then we are going to do something with this callback or else we need to first have a value for our accumulator so that will be reset i cool now now have a look look over here this is the callback if you all remember this is the callback and this is the initial value so friends this callback takes accumulator and current value so the accumulator will be this accumulator and current value will be this at i i hope this piece of code is clear to you all now at last what will happen this particular loop will run and this particular variable will have the final accumulated value so simply return the accumulator good as we are as it is returning us a value so now what we can do simply let response equals array dot my reduce and so friends now what we have to do is we simply need to pass this particular callback first let's pass the callback inside it cool and then the initial value let's see if it returns us the result or not cool the code is crashed as as uh, let's have a look why it basically it is saying it has been already declared so cool let's have a look now once again guys we have to use index over here not i fifteen so it means our polyfill is working so what we have done once again red let's reiterate it we have simply we have simply taken this my reduce function and passed it to this prototype property of this array constructor so that it can be available for all other instances then we have simply created this function and in order to write the polyfill you need to understand the implementation of it in real like how it actually works or how much how many parameters it takes so it takes always try to go step by step okay so first it, first one is callback so we are simply pass the callback second one is initial value then we have simply pass that initial value to accumulator then we have simply run a loop and over here we have what we are doing what we are trying to do is we are simply trying to store the result into the accumulator okay that we are going to get from this callback method and if we have accumulator then it's cool or else we have to give it a value also and finally we are going to return our result so friends this is it for this particular video in this video we have covered the reduce method and we have also covered the filter method polyfill so friends um, i hope you have liked this content and if yes then don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel i will be keep bringing all these particular polyfill videos from basic till advanced so friends more and more polyfill videos will be coming in the upcoming videos so don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you for watching